Hello everyone, welcome to the second session of biochemistry series, Protein Part 2. In today's session, we are going to understand about the classification of standard amino acids and their structure. First of all, let's understand what standard amino acids are. As many as 300 amino acids occur in nature, of these only 22 are known as standard amino acids and they are repeatedly found in the structure of proteins isolated from different forms of life, animals, plants and microbes. This is because the universal nature of genetic code available for the incorporation of only 20 amino acids when the proteins are synthesized in the cells. The process in turn is controlled by DNA, the genetic material of the cell. After the synthesis of proteins, some of the incorporated amino acids undergo modifications to form their derivatives. Let us go through the classification of standard amino acids. The classification is mainly based on structure, polarity, nutritional requirement and metabolic fate of amino acids. Let us understand the classification of amino acids in detail. First of all, about structural classification. Based on the structure of amino acids, standard amino acids are classified into seven categories. The first one is amino acid with aliphatic side chain. And this particular session includes glycine, alanine, and valine. Amino acid can be represented in three letter format or in a single letter format. The first of all, the very simple and the basic amino acid is the glycine. Glycine is represented in a three letter format by GLY. And in the one letter format, it is represented by capital letter G. If we, are, if we go through the structure we can see this particular carbon is alpha carbon to which the alpha carboxylic group and the alpha amino group is attached and the other two valencies of the carbon is satisfied by two hydrogen atom so this is an acryl amino acid that it does not possess the, pro the property of polarity because there is no asymmetric carbon the second one is alanine the three letter chord is ALA and the single letter code is capital A. The only difference between glycine and alanine is that one hydrogen atom in this particular glycine is replaced by a methyl group. And this alanine has polarity because it possesses an asymmetric carbon, which means all the four valencies are of the carbon are satisfied by different groups. And the third one is valine, and the three letter code is VAL, and the single letter code is capital V. So he, from valine onwards, the branching of the amino acid happened. So this particular session we see, that is this CH and the CH3, CH3, this particular session is the R group. But the remaining are the same. See, this is the alpha carbon to which a hydrogen is attached and the carboxylic group and the alpha amino group. So the only change from here onwards after alanine, the structure is very simple to understand because what happens is that this particular session changes. That is, this particular structure classification includes or the classification is based on the changes that happens to the R group. The rest of the things are the same. So, Amino acids with aliphatic side chain includes glycine, alanine, valine, and also it includes two more amino acids. They are leucine and isoleucine. So, leucine, the three letter code is LEU, and the single letter code is capital L. In case of isoleucine, we can see. The difference between leucine and isoleucine is just the rearrangement of the groups in the R group. Isoleucine is represented in the three letter code by ILE and the single letter code is capital L. 
and here is a structure this is the alpha carbon to which the carboxylic group and the amino group is attached and this particular session is the r group and here the same r group but a rearrangement take place and we got the isoleucine so these five amino acids that is glycine alanine valine leucine and isoleucine are included in the category of amino acid with aliphatic side chain that is the first section in the structural classification let us go through the second session of structural classification in the second group of structural classification we go through the amino acid with hydroxyl group on the r group that is hydroxyl group means oh group it include serine threonine and tyrosine here the only difference of serine with that of alanine is that one hydrogen is replaced with an oh group so this particular session is the basic structure it is the same this is the alpha carbon to which a hydrogen a methyl uh, sorry a carboxylic group and an amino group is attached and again a ch2 is attached and one valency is satisfied by oh group and the three letter code is ser and the single letter code is capital letter s that is about serine and in case of threonine here one more hydrogen is replaced with another methyl group so this is the alpha carbon carboxylic group amino group and the h and this whole session is the r group okay and the three letter code is 3 thr and it is represented in the single letter code by capital letter t next is the tyrosine in case of tyrosine this is also an aromatic amino acid because it possesses a benzene ring so here this is the basic structure so until here is the basic structure and this particular session is the r group tyr is the three letter code and capital letter y represent tyrosine because as we have already seen because tyrosine is represented by capital t so in case of tyrosine the single letter code is capital letter y the third category in structural classification is sulfur containing amino acids these particular amino acid has a sulfur in their structure the first one is cysteine and the cysteine the three letter code is c y s and the single letter code is capital letter c and this particular amino acid has a sulfhydryl group as the r group that is their speciality and another one this is cysteine this is called cysteine this particular cysteine possesses the disulfide group see it is very clear in here that this is a cysteine and this is another cysteine so they they formed a bond in here so it forms a disulfide group and it becomes cysteine it, it is not considered as another amino acid but when two cysteines combine together it will become a cysteine this combination is based on oxidation it is also termed as disysteine or cysteine the second sulfur containing amino acid is methionine the three letter code is m e t and the single letter code is capital letter m methionine is a thio ether so in case of methionine what we see is that the r group is a thio ether session and it is known as the universal methyl donor okay so methionine is known as the universal methyl donor
coming to the fourth category in the structural classification is acidic amino acids and their amides. So in case of acidic amino acids, as we all know that amino acid has a methyl group and a carboxylic group. So carboxylic acid is there. So it possesses both the amino group and an acidic carboxylic group. But in case of acidic amino acids, they have an extra carboxylic group. Okay. And their amides, we are also going to go through their amides. Oh, amides means CO NH2 bond. So, the first acidic amino acid is aspartic acid and its amide is asparagin. So, it is very clear from the structure. Like, this is the basic structure. Okay. So, this is the alpha carbon, hydrogen, methyl uh, amino group and, sorry, uh, amino group and the carboxylic acid. So, in case of aspartic acid, it has an extra carboxylic group here. So, it has an acidic property. So, it is an acidic amino acid. It is called aspartic acid. It is also called aspartate. Both aspartic acid and aspartate is the same. And it is represented in the three-letter format as ASP. And the single-letter chord is capital letter D. So, it is a beta carboxyl group is present. Beta carboxyl group present means this is the alpha carbon and this is this particular carbon is the beta carbon. So, the second carboxyl group is attached to the beta carbon. That is why we say it, as, it has a beta carboxyl group. Okay. And here comes this is the amide of aspartic acid. Amide means COnH2 bond is here. So, instead of COOH, we have COnH2. So, the Amide of aspartic acid is known as asparagin. Okay, and it is represented as ASN. Asparagin is represented as ASN, and the single letter code is capital letter N. And the second acidic amino acid is glutamic acid. It is represented as GLU and the single letter chord is capital letter E. It has a gamma carboxyl group. So, this is the alpha carbon, this is the beta carbon and this is the gamma carbon and this particular carboxyl group, that is the extra carboxyl group is attached to the gamma carbon. So, this is the glutamic acid and its amide is glutamine or glutamine and it is represented as GLN and the single letter code is capital letter Q. After acidic amino acid, the fifth category in the structural classification is the basic amino acid. So in case of acidic amino acid, it means it has an extra carboxylic group so, in case of amino acid with the basic property means it has an extra NH2 group. The first one is lysine. So, lysine is represented as LYS and the single letter code is capital letter K. And it has an epsilon amino group. Epsilon amino group means this is the alpha carbon, this is the beta carbon and this is the gamma carbon. And this is the delta carbon. This is the epsilon carbon. And to that epsilon carbon, the extra amino group is added. That is why it is called, it has an um, epsilon amino group. So, this is lysine. LYS is the three-letter code and capital letter K is the single-letter code. Next to basic amino acid is arginine. Single letter code is capital letter R and the three letter code is ARG and it has a special guanido group. Okay, so guanido group means this is the guanido group. This is a special group present in here that it has a special group that is a guanido group. It is not simply any NH2, it is a guanido group attached to the 
particular carbon. So this is alpha carbon, beta carbon, gamma carbon and delta carbon to which another NH2 and this particular guanido group is attached. The third basic amino acid is histidine. Three letter code is HIS and the single letter code is capital letter H and it has an imidazole ring. So it has an imidazole. The special group is imidazole. Okay. So uh, in these sessions, okay, in these basic carbon, sorry, basic amino acids, let me show the R group. So, in this particular amino acid, this whole session is the R group. Okay, in here, this whole session is the R group. And in here, this whole session is the R group. Okay, and in this case of histidine, it has a imidazole group. The sixth category in structural classification is aromatic amino acid. Aromatic amino acid means they possess a benzyl or a phenyl ring in that. Okay. So the first one is phenylalanine, which is represented in the three letter code by PHE. And the single letter code is capital letter F. And the second one is tryptophan and the three letter code is TRP single letter code is capital letter W okay and we have also gone through one aromatic amino acid in the session amino acid with hydroxyl group that is tyrosine tyrosine is also categorized in aromatic amino acid it is also an amino acid with hydroxyl group OH group. Okay. And this case of uh, tryptophan, it has a special indole ring in it. Okay. So it has an uh, indole ring in it. And this particular tryptophan show the ultraviolet radiation absorption property. So UV absorption is a special property of this. So here this particular session is the R group. And here this is the R group. Okay. And in here this is the R group. And, and to the last session of the structural classification is the amino acid. Only one amino acid is categorized in this particular session that is proline. And the three letter code is PRO and the single letter code is capital letter P. And it has a special pyrrolidin group in it. So, so far we have understood the seven categories of amino acids based on the classification of this structure that how their R groups are structured. Next about the 21st and 22nd standard amino acids. So in case of the 21st and 22nd standard amino acid. Both these standard amino acids were discovered recently. So the first one that is the 21st standard amino acid is selenocysteine. Okay, the three letter code is capital letter S and small letter E, C and the single letter code is capital letter U. So this particular amino acid named selenocysteine it is found at the active site of certain enzymes or protein that are known as the selenoproteins. For example, glutathione peroxidase, glycine reductase, thioredoxin reductase, etc. Actually, the selenocysteine is an unusual amino acid. It is known as an unusual amino acid because it contains a trace element named selenium in the place of sulfur atom from that of cysteine okay so it is named as selenocysteine means the structure matches to that of cysteine but in case of cysteine we have already seen this particular cysteine is an amino acid which containing a sulfur 
but in case of selenocysteine instead of the sulfur the sulfur is replaced with a trace element called selenocysteine that is why it is called named as selenocysteine and incorporation of the selenocysteine into the protein during translation is carried out by a codon named uga and actually it is very interesting to note that this particular uga has a so stop codon which means that terminates the protein synthesis but in here this particular uga triplet codon it also code for the incorporation of selenocysteine into the protein structure and another unique feature of the selenocysteine it is enzymatically generated from serine directly on the tRNA that is a selenocysteine tRNA and then incorporated into the proteins and the 22nd amino acid it actually some researchers described this particular one the 22nd one known as the pyrolysine in 2002 but some have not yet considered pyrolysine as the 22nd amino acid and the pyrolysine the three letter code is pyl and the single letter code is capital letter o and this particular amino acid is coded by the codon triplet codon uag and uh, it is similar to lysine that is why it is named as pyrolysine and it is actually present in some bacterial proteins and it is coded by uag okay it is and uh, it is seen in some case of the bacterial proteins so these are the basic 22 standard amino acids so we have gone through the standard amino acid classification based on the structure and we have also understood about their basic structures as now we all have gone through the basic structure of the standard amino acids it's very simple to understand the rest of the classification the second section of the classification is based on the polarity based on the polarity standard amino acids are divided into four sections the first one is non polar amino acids the specialty of the non polar amino acids are they are hydrophobic means they are water hating and they have no charge on their r group and this particular category includes that is the non polar amino acids which does not have any charge on their r group and they are hydrophobic include alanine leucine isoleucine valine methionine phenylalanine tryptophan and proline based on polarity the second category is polar amino acid with no charge on r group the first category was non polar amino acid and the second category is polar amino acids with no charge on the r group and they have no charge on the r group and they possess groups such as hydroxyl group sulfide groups and amide and these particular amino acid participate in the hydrogen bonding during the protein structure formation and this category includes glycine serine threonine cysteine glutamine asparagine and tyrosine the third session includes the polar amino acids with positive r group so based on the polarity the third category is polar amino acids with positive r group and positive r group means they have a positive charge on their r group so this category include the basic amino acids that is the lysine arginine and histidine the last category based on polarity is polar amino acid with 
negative R group, which means that they have a negative charge in their R group. And it includes the dicarboxylic monoamino acids that uh, they are the aspartic acid and glutamic acid. Next to the third type of classification, we have gone to the structural classification and the classification of amino acid based on the polarity. And here comes the nutritional classification. So we have gone through the 22 basic of the standard amino acids, which are very much essential for the synthesis of variety of proteins and other biological functions. But all these 22 amino acids need not to be taken in diet. So based on this nutritional requirement, we have categorized the amino acids into, first of all, essential or indispensable amino acids means they cannot be synthesized in the body. So these particular amino acids must be supplied through diet. And these amino acids are very, very important for the proper growth and maintenance of the body. And it includes arginine, valine, histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, threonine, and tryptophan. And among those, arginine and histidine can be partly synthesized by adult humans. So they are known as semi-essential amino acids or semi-indispensable amino acids. So overall essential amino acids comprise of the 10 amino acids and among them the two arginine and histidine is partly synthesized Partly synthesized means only a small fraction of arginine and histidine is synthesized in the body. So we need to take it through our diet. But the other, the remaining eight amino acids can't be synthesized in the body. They must be supplied through diet. So that is the first session in the nutritional classification. And in the second session, the amino acids are non-essential or dispensable amino acids means the body can synthesize these amino acids. There is no need to be consumed or it is not essential to consume these through our diet. So it includes glycine, alanine, serine, cysteine, aspartate, asparagine, glutamate, glutamine, tyrosine and proline. These are just the two classification based on the nutritional requirement. The first category, which is not synthesized by the body, so we need to take them through our diet. And the second category, we need to, we need not to be taken through our diet because it can be synthesized in our body. Moving on. Coming to the last session of our classification, the last type of classification is the metabolic fate of these amino acids. So the carbon skeleton of these amino acids can serve as a precursor for the synthesis of glucose or fat or both. So from this metabolic point of view, what happens to this amino acid after digestion? They are classified into, first session is glycogenic amino acid. Glycogenic amino acid means these amino acids can serve as a precursor for the formation of glucose or glycogen. Example is alanine, aspartate, glycine and methionine. The second category is ketogenic amino acids means these particular amino acids can serve as a precursor for fat synthesis. Okay, the two amino acids are exclusively ketogenic and they are leucine and lysine. These two amino acids are exclusively Exclusively ketogenic means only fat can be synthesized from this leucine as well as lysine. And the third category is glycogenic and ketogenic, which means from these amino acids, both glycogen as well as the fat can be synthesized, which include isoleucine, phenylalanine, tryptophan, and tyrosine. So we have gone through the different methods of classification of amino acids. 
and we have also understood about the structure of the stat the 22 standard amino acid so the amino acid can be classified based on their structure their polarity their nutrition requirement and finally their metabolic rate and based on their structure they are classified into seven categories they are amino acid with aliphatic side chain with hydroxyl group sulfur containing amino acid acidic amino acid basic amino acid aromatic amino acid and amino acid and based on their polarity non-polar ones polar ones with positive r group polar ones with negative r group and polar amino acid with no charge on their r group based on nutrition classification they are essential amino acid and non-essential amino acid and finally based on their metabolic fate their glycogenic amino acid ketogenic amino acid and glycogenic as well as ketogenic or glycogenic and ketogenic amino acid i hope it is clear for you all thank you so much for joining in this session we will meet again in the next session